I had been commanding an F-15E fighter squadron for about two to three months. Here I am. The single greatest honor of my career was commanding this squadron. Way better than working at the White House or the Thunderbirds. Way better. A huge honor. I got about 100 totally competitive, right, type A, macho fighter pilots. They like to be right. They like to be elite, and they are. And they like to be good. And in the first two or three months, I sat back and I watched, and we were starting to miss little things. Little things, not big things. Little things were falling out. And about three months into it, I landed from a sortie, and here comes the wing commander screaming at me across the tarmac. He says, Fifi, in my office, two of your guys messed up. I'm standing literally at attention, getting yelled at for the first time in my military career. I go back to the squadron, and I bring in the two said individuals who were the instructors in the formation. And here's the thing. They were my two top instructors. My number one and number two out of like 100, these were my guys. I couldn't believe it. I said, is this what you have done? They said, yes, ma'am. They'd taken a two-ship of F-15Es at 500 feet and 500 miles an hour and flown through a wildlife refuge. Not only is that completely junior varsity mission planning, well below their capability and totally unexpected, it is extremely dangerous. You hit a flock of geese at 500 feet and 500 miles an hour, and you're giving that jet back to the taxpayers of America, and I may very well be knocking on your spouse's door telling your kids you're not coming home. It was a big deal, and my top two guys made this junior varsity error. And when they admitted it, I just stared at them, and I didn't know what to do as a leader. And then these words came out of my mouth. I looked right at them, and I said, steel sharpens steel. I've never said that in my life. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those like, slow-motion movies, steel sharpens steel, and they looked at me like, okay. And I said, gentlemen, you have two options. Option one is I remove you from being an evaluator and instructor pilot in the squadron, and you become a line pilot again. That didn't go over well with the fighter pilot ego. Status is everything. Or option two is at my next commander's call, I'm going to put the word steel sharp and steel up on stage, and you're going to talk about what went wrong, how it happened. But more importantly, share with the team so that nobody in this squadron ever makes that mistake ever again. This is the wingman contract in action. And they said, ugh. They went with option B, and when they took that stage, it was painful. Not going to lie. The tension was thick in the room. You don't do this often, you know, publicly. Yeah, in the debrief of your formation you do, but in front of like 100 people, like, you just don't do this, right? It hurt, and it was hard for the guys on stage, but I got to tell you, the people who were most uncomfortable were the ones in the audience, because they're thinking, oh, but for the grace of God go I. I'm going to be next. And over the next six months, it was like pulling teeth for me. Someone talks steel sharp and steel. Maybe they're big things, maybe they're little things, but there's always ways to improve and get better. And unless we're willing to share our mistakes, we're not going to get better as a team. And all of a sudden, about month seven, like this light bulb went on. It was like, the, like a switch was flicked in my squadron. And people started coming up and saying, ma'am, I've got a steel sharp and steel moment. Can I share? What the heck? Right? All of a sudden, vulnerability became cool. And as I saw the gentlemen become more willing to be vulnerable and share, the level of trust as individuals and as teammates got stronger. And guess what happens when that happens? The level of performance goes up in measurable and quantifiable ways. And 15 months into my command, for the steel sharp and steel moment, guess who took the stage? The scowl. So here I am. Fighter squadron commander, supposedly at the height of my career, graduated Thunderbird. And you know what I did? I tried to show a student how I could grease a strike eagle right on brick one. And I landed three feet short of the overrun. Three feet short of the runway. Thank God there was an underrun. And at Seymour Johnson, it's rather large. So that worked out for me. Here's the thing the student didn't know. Nobody knew. But I took the stage and shared it because it was the right thing to do. And as a leader, I didn't have a leg to stand on if I didn't get up there and do that. And when I left the squadron several months later with my change of command, it's tradition in a fighter squadron that they give a gift, and that gift usually stays in the physical building in the squadron itself. And they gave me this gift, this big, huge sign that's still the first thing you see when you walk into the 333rd Fighter Squadron. It's a sign that says, Lancers, that's who we were. Prepare for battle, because that's what we do. Steel sharpens steel. Accountability, 
holding each other to a standard, holding yourself to a standard, no matter where you are, out of a place of love, not judgment or shame, out of a place of caring and a shared commitment to your wingman contract, your mission, and your values. We can always get better. It doesn't matter how long you've been in this business or how young you are. There are things you can share with other people 